Hello everyone, it's Lagi to be a Power Packed Week and we're here to tell you all about the companies that have been in the news. I'm Priya Sheet and you're watching The Daily Dispatch. Now, the companies that are making headlines today include Zomato, Baidu's as well as Jungle Ventures. Well, headline number one, food delivery giant Zomato is on a clean-up drive. It has decided to shut down both its grocery as well as its nutraceuticals business. Now, gaps in order fulfillment, poor customer experience, as well as uh, some other factors like increasing competition from rivals were some reasons as to why the grocery business was shut down. Now, Zomato believes that its investment in growers will generate better results rather than its in-house grocery efforts. Well, headline number two, EdTech startup Baiju's is once again dominating the news space with reports suggesting another acquisition is on the horizon. The US-based coding platform Tinker may be acquired by Baiju's to establish its leadership in the K-12 segment ahead of its IPO. Now, Baiju's has spent over $2 billion in buying companies across segments and so far the most valued internet startup has acquired about 15 companies since it was founded. Well, headline number three on the investor side, Jungle Ventures has raised $225 million in the first close of its fourth fund. The venture firm is looking to replicate its success in startups in the regions of Southeast Asia and India. The fund saw participation from existing investors such as Temasek Holdings, International Finance Corporation, as well as German-based DEG, among others. The new fund is expected to hit a target close of $350 million. Well, moving on to our second segment, I have with me someone who has been in news of late. I have with me Sridhar Rembu from Zoho Corp who needs no introduction. Thank you very much for being a part of the Daily Dispatch. I want to begin by asking you about the 35 crore rupee investment that you've made in Voxel Grids at this point in time. What does it really mean for Zoho Corp and how do you think you're going to be utilizing um, this investment to your benefit? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me and Jose. Um this uh, investment in uh, voxel grids is very much part of our uh, strategy to nurture deep technology r and d investments and uh, make sure that we sustain that r and d and acquire the know how in very critical technologies uh, mri machines are very advanced technology where uh, superconducting magnets and all of that is involved and, uh, and while this technology is both interesting for itself, it also has broad ramifications in many different areas. And we want to invest in these types of things. We have already done these in Zoho itself. Now we want to spread this uh, these investments across the landscape. So that is the whole idea here. Right, you spoke about a very interesting point, which is that you want to spread these investments across the landscape. So what is in the pipeline and how does this fit with your larger strategy at Zoho? Our broader strategy or uh, 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 statement is to be a deep technology provider and emerge as one of the top 10, top five technology players in the world with a breadth and depth of technology know-how in a variety of areas. That is in software, semiconductors, we have investment in medical equipment. And we see a vast opportunity here. And also there is a pressing need in India for all these investments. We need to be to get the advanced industrial and technological know-how. And as a group, since we have vast experience doing this R and D, uh, we are in a really good position to invest in this. That's why we are doing it. Right. You know, talk to us about the last couple of months. You know, they've been a very interesting period across the board for across all industries. At Soho Corp, what has been your experience? And do you think that you're better equipped to handle this kind of volatility or dynamism, as you call it, uh, in the whole uh, industry and landscape? Right now, I think the, the, the realization has with India uh, on the way of our prime minister has announced the Atman Nirbar Bharat Initiative last year. And... Uh, so there is clear understanding at every level in the government and in the private sector that we need to have the know-how and advanced know-how in India. It's very clear. And we need to make things we depend upon. Critical technologies we depend upon, we need to make them in India and have the know-how to make them in India. That's clear and the government has sent a clear uh, uh, policy objective. And it's now time for the private sector to step up and deliver. That is how I see it. Obviously, if you look at whether it's advanced steel or whether it's drones, whether it's MRI machines, 
advanced software technologies, databases, or operating systems, or any of these, AI, any of these. It's the private sector that has to step up and, and invest in the R&D to build those capabilities. And that is critical. And that's it's now that it has emerged as a very clear goal, national goal, we ourselves are aligning with it and, and, and leading the charge here. That's all we like to think of ourselves. You know, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the future roadmap and the focus areas that you have at Soho Corp. You know, I do understand uh, that at this point in time, a lot of companies out there are charting out a blueprint considering that we now know how to deal with this kind of uh, new normal and the kind of agility that an organization needs to have. So what kind of focus areas will you be having if you could highlight the top three focus areas for you at Soho Corp? At Zoho itself, now we are investing heavily in remote work technologies. And it's not just work from home, but also work from remote uh, rural offices. We have opened 20 plus offices. I myself uh, now work primarily from rural centers now. I visited a couple in the last few weeks. And uh, so it's clear to me that this is here to stay. This trend of rural offices and expansion is here to stay. And how do we knit all this together into a unified culture? This is where technology can play a vital role. And we are innovating in a lot of areas in remote work and enabling our own uh, people to be productive in this and then making those products available to the broader market so that we can enable other companies to achieve similar kinds of productivity that we are able to achieve. So that is the goal of our current uh, product portfolio as it evolves. And we also, of course, we recently announced uh, our foray into uh, uh, our CRM has evolved with a very strong uh, 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 offering in terms of the Canvas offering. So, and then we launched Catalyst for uh, infrastructure services. So all these are now, uh, you know, demonstrating that Zoho is committed to deepening our technology stack and deepening our, uh, our product portfolio. And so this is all with the eye towards the next 10, 15 years, how we can emerge as one of the top technology players in the world. That's where we're heading. Right, so give us some indication as to what kind of revenue trajectory that you're working with over the next uh, two to three years. If you could give us a short to medium term target in terms of what kind of revenue and growth strategies uh, are you have in the search at the Hoka. We are at, uh, uh, we don't, as a private company, we don't disclose revenue, but a lot of our older filings are available with the government. So, which is often reported. And we generally don't like to, to uh, confirm or deny those things because being private, that's one of the privileges we have. But we are at 10,000 employees. We have really good productivity and we are growing at a very rapid clip. So we're doing quite well. We are the largest product company out of India right now. And we would like to maintain that lead and uh, innovate further. That's, that's how we think about it. And we think in terms of the next five years, we should be in multiple billion dollars in revenue scale. And over the next 10 years, it could be 10 plus billion dollars. That's where we are heading. Right. You know, I want to understand uh, in terms of fundraise, you know, at this point in time, there is so much cash that's chasing the uh, tech startup, new age companies at this point in time. Uh, what kind of view do you have as far as the whole fundraise market is concerned? And the whole, what is the plan in terms of raising uh, any funds in this financial year? Uh, so we don't have plans to raise money ourselves. So that is uh, first, because we would like to remain private. And we, if you have to raise money, then we'll have to take the company public at some point, which is not part of our plan. So we won't raise any money. And if you look at the fundraising landscape, at one level, this is of course a major uh, 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 word of confidence in India, which is a good thing. But another level, it also reflects the ultra easy monetary policies in the US. So there's way too much money being produced and the US stock market is in a clear bubble. And that bubble is finding its way to India too. So um, the thing that we can be happy about is it's finding way to, its way to India rather than some other country, which is a word of confidence, which is in a way good. But it also, we have to acknowledge the source of money, which is the bubble itself. It's not, you know, it's not like, uh, there is some, suddenly they discovered some new fundamentals here. They're simply just throwing money around, spraying money around. And that, to the extent that it's a bubble, we have to be also on our guard for the bubble bursting, as it has happened before. 2000 and 2008, 
those episodes should be kept in mind but having said that long term we are investing in india we are invest for example the mri technology all of this and we are investing in our own products so we are optimists about india just that i don't like bubble driven investment where you know a lot of uh, easy money chases with short you know quick returns that's the mentality of a lot of the investment to that extent that might be a correction but the long term uh, story is really good so that's a while put it all right uh, we'll ride with that ambition that the long ter- long term story is in that thank you very much for your time and thank okay. you so much for being a part of the daily dispatch okay Well, time now to wrap up this edition of the Daily Dispatch. I'll catch you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Goodbye and have a lovely day.